In today's episode we are going to transform this dusty engine bay of my BMW E28. During the past decade it remained almost untouched, so it is finally time to bring it back to its former glory. Prepare for an episode filled with wrenching, degreasing and vapor blasting. Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode. Um, so I think a lot of you were probably suspecting that this was going to be the 100k special video. Uh, but actually at the time that I'm filming this, we haven't reached 100k just yet. I think we need about 75 more subscribers. Um, so I figured I might as well squeeze in a quick video about the E28. Uh, because I really want to enjoy that car this summer. And there are still some small things that I need to do to it before that can happen. So in this episode, we are going to be working on the engine bay and doing some maintenance stuff as well. Uh, and then once that is done, we'll move to the new special project. The previous video on this car was the front end restoration. So we redid this section of the car and then the other side of the hood. And now we are going to do something similar to the engine bay. Uh, and it clearly needs some work. And additionally, I also want to do some mechanical work to this car. Uh, for example, I just recently remembered that I never did a timing belt on this engine. So we are definitely going to do one in this episode. Uh, and I also want to get rid of the high idle issue that this car has been having. I'm sure that you guys have already heard it in my videos and I'm really getting annoyed by that. So we are also going to try to fix that in this episode. But before we start stripping away parts like a lunatic, I think it is a good idea to give the engine bay a quick wash first now that the engine is still sealed up. And once most of the heavy grime is gone, we can start diving deeper into the more specific areas that need some work. I am starting the first wash by blowing away some of the dust and leaves with compressed air. Then I'm using a soft bristle brush and some soapy water to clean as much of the engine bay as possible and then drying everything with a leaf blower. After one pass that already looks heaps better, uh, but obviously we still have a lot more work to do. Um, and I think I'm going to start taking off some of the individual uh, items that are in the bay. For example, the window wash reservoir, uh, the fuse panel, uh, the battery, and maybe even the uh, expansion tank for the coolant. Actually, I think now I'm going to drain out the coolant and take out the expansion tank and the radiator as well because it will need to come out uh, when we do the timing belt anyway. And I also want to check out if I need to order a new radiator because I don't think it is in the best of shapes.
that gives us some extra space to work. Uh, and now I think I want to do the same over here, uh, taking out the air box, relocating the relay slash fuse box, uh, taking out the battery and maybe some other small stuff. I am pretty satisfied with how the wheel wells are looking at the moment. They will need an extra bit of cleaning. Uh, but now I want to focus on taking the inlet manifold off. Uh, and that looks like we need to remove a lot of vacuum hoses. The thermostat housing seems to be in the way of one of the nuts for the intake manifold so that needs to come off as well. All the nuts from the intake manifold are loosened so uh, let's see if I can wiggle it off. Next I'm going to take off the distributor cap and the spark plug cables. So little update, the entire wiring harness I tucked over there and then all the uh, vacuum hoses, fuel hoses, uh, coolant hoses I tucked away over here so that I have a little bit of space to clean everything. But first I think I'm going to take off all the accessory belts uh, and then take the timing belt cover off. It is now day two of working on the engine uh, and the last time I stranded on removing the fan clutch. Uh, I didn't really know how it was mounted but apparently this is a nut that needs to come off the uh, axle of the water pump. And to get it off normally it is best to keep this belt on here uh, so that you can keep tension on it and then this should come off. But I am not going to do that as I don't really feel uh, mounting everything back again. Uh, so I came up with a different way. This is some leftover metal from uh, the rails for the gates uh, and I drilled some holes in it that sh should match up with the holes on the water pump pulley and that way I can bolt it up to the pulley and hold it while I undo the nut. Okay, so I've got the bar here connected. I'm going to let it rest onto the frame and then let's see what happens. Easy. That worked a treat. Mm. 
that looks like it needs a bit of sandblasting. The timing belt doesn't look that bad, but it is a bit loose for my liking. Good thing that we're replacing it. Next, we're going to take off the crank pulley. Okay, now it is time to take off the timing belt. Uh, and first I have put the engine at top dead center for the first piston. And that's pretty easy to do. There is a mark here on the crankshaft. There is another one over here at the camshaft. And then also the distributor has a little marking over here. If the camera wants to focus right over there. So in theory, now everything is ready to take off the timing belt. But before we're going to do that, uh, I'm going to loosen this nut for the camshaft sprocket. Uh, now is a convenient time since we can hold the crankshaft in position with a key uh, and then the timing belt will keep the sprocket here from turning. The reason why I want to take this off is because behind it sits a camshaft seal and while we're doing this, I think it is a convenient time to replace that as well. That is now sufficiently loose and now the belt can come off. As a matter of fact, I take my words back, uh, the belt is looking worse than I initially thought. Yeah, that's not good. Good thing that we're replacing it. Beautiful. This is going to be satisfying. I think I spent enough time in the engine bay for today uh, and I really need to get to stripping some of these parts to get vapor honed and one of them is the intake manifold. Uh, we're going to take off the throttle body and the fuel rail with the injectors. I'm also going to vapor hone the valve cover, so that needs to come off as well. With the valve cover removed and the intake fully stripped, we can make our way to CQS Classics. They are a company that is specialized in the preservation and restoration of classic Citroëns and they have over 20 years of experience. 
Their workshop is filled to the brim with the most iconic models of the brand and it is a very cool sight to behold. But what is even cooler is that their garage is equipped with a brand new aqua blasting machine and they agreed to letting me use it for my BMW. These machines use pressurized water to blast glass beads onto non-ferrous metals in order to clean and polish them with amazing results. And that is what we are going to do to my various BMW parts, starting with the valve cover. After just 10 minutes of blasting, the result is simply amazing. The valve cover pretty much looks like new. Now let's see what happens when we do the intake manifold because that is what I am most excited for. I didn't have too much time to ponder about the result because I had a couple of other pieces to do and time was running out. But we'll take a look at all the parts when we're back home. Okay, so this is the result of our little vapor honing session uh, and the results are just incredible. Uh, I couldn't be happier uh, and I'm definitely going to do this more often because you couldn't even do this without a tool like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm really stoked. If you look up closely to some pieces, you can still see that there are some stains in there, uh, but nothing major, it's just very minor. And if I went a bit longer with the machine, they probably would have come out. But I didn't have a ton of time yesterday, um, and this already looks 10 times better than what I am used to. So I am pretty stoked with this result. If you live in Belgium and you are interested in getting your parts vapor honed, I would suggest uh, contacting CQS Classics as they now offer the service for their customers. Uh, I'm going to leave their details in the description below and then you guys can contact them for a quote or even an appointment. Now we're going to dive into the engine bay again. What I want to do now uh, is first take off the water pump. Uh, and then I'm also going to put the valve cover back on just so that the engine is sealed up again. And then we're going to do one final clean of the engine bay, uh, cleaning all the hoses and the cables and stuff, so that it is spotless for when we start rebuilding it. Currently I have to wait on the seal for this camshaft plate, so that is why uh, we have to kill some time doing this, but it will make the engine bay look extra fresh. Clean up on aisle 5, please. That is already looking so sick. I can't wait to get this finished. Okay, we are now a couple of days further. Um, I took a bit of a break from filming because I was doing some tedious stuff uh, that wasn't really that interesting. But basically what I did was um, I cleaned up the entire wiring harness. I also took off pretty much all of the coolant hoses and with them off the car I gave them a thorough clean and I fitted some new hose clamps on them so they look very fresh. I also cleaned up some other stuff uh, and I have the vapor hone stuff laying here. I also painted some of the brackets uh, and the pulleys are over here. Um, and now I got to a point where I wanted to fix my high idle issue and that has everything to do with this little guy. Ever since I got this BMW it has been having a high idle issue at cold start. I think it sits at about 1800 RPM which is pretty high. I'm not too sure if it's 1800 because the ref counter is still broken. That is actually something I still need to fix. Uh, but still, it is idling quite high, too high for what I think is normal. And then it also takes a very long time for the uh, idle or the refs to settle once the car has warmed up. 
so there definitely is something going on there. Uh, so I went looking on the internet and I came across a video of uh, M539 Restorations working on his E30. Uh, that car has the same engine as my E28. And he had a similar issue with his uh, cold start bypass valve, whatever this is called. Uh, and he also had a fix, so that is what we are going to try as well right now. But first, a quick explanation on how this thing works. So basically you have uh, coolant flowing through here and air flowing here. This air goes to the intake manifold and it influences the idle. In the middle sits a valve that opens and closes uh, depending on the temperature of the coolant. So if the coolant is cold, the valve is open. And if the coolant is at operating temperature, which is uh, about 90 degrees Celsius, it closes up the valve in here and cuts off the air going through. Obviously at cold start you want to have a bit of a higher idle, so that is why the valve needs to be open so that more air can go to the intake. Uh, but then it is no longer necessary once the car is at operating temperature, so that is when the valve can be closed. But I uh, am experiencing something else, uh, my idle stays high a lot longer and that probably has to do with the fact that the valve doesn't close up when it is supposed to. So it is probably blocked or something and we are going to try to free it up. So the way that Sretton from M539 Restorations freed up his valve was by simply boiling it in a pot with boiling water uh, and then he also yeeted in some dishwasher tablets so we're going to give that a go as well. The water is starting to boil which means it is at about 100 degrees and still it isn't closed up completely uh, but we'll give it a few more minutes it has been boiling for a while now and still it is only closed for 50 percent so we're going to start by throwing in a dishwasher tablet Uh, it actually closed a little bit further, but not all the way yet. So we'll give it some more. An hour of cooking later and still the valve doesn't want to close, so I'm afraid that we're going to have to replace this bad boy. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to find one because I believe they are discontinued. But I have some friends that have uh, BMW parts uh, laying around, so maybe I can source one. And yeah, then we just have to get lucky that those ones aren't broken either. So I think for now the cooking show is done uh, and we're going to move to servicing the injectors. These are my injectors and as you can see I already serviced one of them. Uh, I did it with one of these service kits uh, and I'll quickly show you how I did it. Here is our disgusting injector. So first a quick clean. Now I'm going to take off the two rubber o-rings, the plastic o-ring and the plastic cap. Now only remains the tiny fuel filter in the top of the injector. Uh, usually that is pretty stuck in there, so I'm using a screw that I'm turning into it and then I pull it out. And now we pull. Ugh. Almost. And there we have it. That is everything we needed to take off, so now we can put on the new parts.
The last thing is a fuel filter, but we are going to wait with that for a second because I'm going to try to flush the injectors. This is the ghetto setup that I'm going to use to clean up the injector a little bit. So we've got a 12 volt battery here uh, that will be used to power the injector. Uh, and then in the top, I'm going to spray the cleaning agent while the injector is opening and closing. And then lastly, the filter. Beautiful. Now let's put the injectors back on the rail and then on the intake manifold. The intake manifold is now fully complete again uh, because I also added the throttle body. Uh, it is still on there temporarily because I am waiting for the seal to come in. Uh, and by extension, I am also still waiting for the seal that sits behind this uh, camshaft seal plate. Uh, hopefully that comes in today because that is really the last thing that I need to finally complete the timing belt on the engine. Uh, and once that is done, I can reassemble the whole thing. There are some things that I can do before my parts come in uh, and one of those is the install of the water pump. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Actually, while I wait, I think I am already going to take the camshaft seal and the plate off because it looks like somebody has been messing around with silicone in here uh, and that's going to take some time to clean up. This is a little camshaft plate with the camshaft seal uh, and this o-ring is what I'm currently waiting on. This is what is uh, holding up the timing belt install. Uh, and clearly somebody has already done the camshaft seal at some point because uh, from the factory there isn't silicone around this. Somebody clearly has done this job and also forgot to order the o-ring. Uh, and silicone wasn't the best solution because it was leaking ever so slightly. But at the moment, I already have the red seal, so we can go ahead and replace that. I guess that is how far we can go for now. Let's pick this up once the o-ring gets here. Now we are going to change the valve cover gasket. Before I mount the valve cover, I quickly want to mention that after the vapor honing process, I was kind of afraid that I would still have some glass bead residue underneath of this plate because there are two holes here uh, and then one over here. So that is why I drilled out all the original rivets and took the plate off. And actually there was a very small amount of glass bead still underneath here. So I cleaned that out and then riveted the plate back on again. Uh, but yeah, if I wouldn't have done that, 
some residue might have gone into my engine and that would not have been good. And voila, the o-ring has arrived so we can continue with the camshaft seal and by extension the timing belt. Now it's time for a new tensioner. In this position the tensioner is going to provide the least amount of tension on the timing belt so that it is easy to put it on. I'm going to put tension on the belt now, like so. And now we're going to rotate the engine a couple of times and see if all the timing marks line up. Everything lines up, so that means that I can torque the tensioner and the camshaft pulley, and then we can go ahead and put the timing belt covers back on. I have been looking forward to this moment. The harmonic balancer and the crank pulley are next. Now let's put on the bracket for the power steering pump. I have already started putting on the power steering pump and now I also want to do the alternator, uh, the pulley for the water pump and then the fan and that way I can put on the belts again. Okay, so the front part of the engine is now done uh, and now I think I'm going to take the wiring harness and lay it back over the engine uh, because soon the intake manifold is going to go back on and then 
it will be pretty hard to reach everything in that area so uh, we'll go ahead and do that I bought a new set of spark plug cables and a new cap for the rotor I also bought a rotor but it turned out to be the wrong one so we're going to use the old one uh, and I'm going to keep the spark plugs that are currently in the car because they are maybe two months old I added some more stuff to the hose spaghetti so um, I added vacuum lines, uh, coolant lines and pretty much we are ready for the intake manifold to go on but there is a slight issue. The seal that I ordered for the throttle body is not correct so we're going to have to make a seal ourselves. Luckily I still have some of this universal gasket paper laying around so we can cut out the seal we want ourselves. Uh, and it turns out that the previous mechanic also used this paper to make the previous seal. Uh, I don't know if he did it because the seal is discontinued or he also forgot to order the right one. Uh, but it is kind of a coincidence. And with that done, I think it is time to put on this beautiful intake manifold. I am so excited for this. Wow, that looks so good. I can't believe my car is looking this clean. Okay, let's continue because I really want to finish this engine bay tonight. Okay boys and girls, the engine is completely back together. Uh, it was a really big job, but I am so stoked with how it came out. It really was worth it. Uh, now I just need to put fluids into everything, coolant, power steering fluid, window wash, and then we can give her a crank and hopefully she still starts. One massive coolant leak later, uh, I think we are leak free. So let's give her a crank and see if she starts. So that means that our engine bay refresh is done. And now let's take a look at some before and afters. So I think that is going to wrap up this lengthy episode. 
Um, I'm sorry it took so long to post this one, but it simply was a lot of work to do. And I also got delayed a little bit by the delivery of some parts. But nevertheless, um, I am so happy that I did this. The car looks a lot cleaner and I think it presents a lot better as well. Uh, and it is actually nearing a point where it is mechanically ready to be driven around. Uh, there are still some small things to do. For example, the clutch, uh, that is something I still need to do. And there is the high idle issue remaining. With the help of one of you guys, I actually figured out how we can fix the high idle issue and I have already ordered the parts needed. So I am going to try to incorporate that fix in the next episode, which will be the 100k special episode uh, revealing the new project that is coming to the channel. So I hope you guys are excited for that. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing as it really helps me out. Uh, and I hope to see all of you in the next episode. Until next time.